Mommy? Yeah. Hi. Hey, welcome. Let me just turn the sound. There we go. Off for me. Hi. Hey, everyone in Purpose and Profit. You saying hello? Hope that you all are doing well this evening. Hey, Precious, how are you? So what I'm doing is that I am adjusting my screens. You all can't see what I see, but when you use Zoom in combination with Facebook, um, it's hard sometimes to see both things. So I'm trying to set it to where I can see both things. Don't touch that, honey. And I think I've got it. Because I want to try and see comments and be able to do this. So let's see how that works. I think I've got it where, I think I've got it. All right, so um, Precious, you're on. Let me know if you can hear me pretty good. Y'all see, I got my whiteboard behind me. So I'm gonna be um, sharing some things with you. Make sure you have your um, notepad or some paper, pen and pencil somewhere so that you can take some notes. All right. And I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Of course, there's this huge delay too when your comments are coming in. So if I don't like respond to them right away, you know why. <laughs> But thanks for asking, Precious. I'm doing really well, doing really well. And I need to see if you guys can't see. Can you see the entire whiteboard? It's strange the way it's looking to me on here. Let me let me move it back a little bit. Sorry, guys. Hopefully, y'all can see the whole whole board. If you can't, let me know. If I begin, if I start writing and you guys can't see the top of the board, um, let me know so that I can adjust. Okay. Oh yeah, you guys can see it. Okay. It's just I can't see because of my screen is. I'm trying to see both screens. All right. All right. So let me get started. Um, like I said, I'll try to uh, make sure that I catch comments if I can. If not, once I get off the board, I'll um, come back to any comments or questions that are there. Um, but, you know, let me introduce myself first for those who are new to the group um, and will be joining us live or maybe um, checking out the replay. I am Lexi Jones. I am the facilitator of this amazing group. And I am the founder of Hatch 24-7, which is a virtual business incubator for women and in particular single moms, where I'm helping them to achieve freedom through business ownership. So tonight I wanted to come on and talk about profits, right? Because when we, we get into entrepreneurship and a lot of us, yes, we want to be able to do good for our community. We want to be able to do good for um, who, whatever population we're serving. We may want to, you know... Yes, we have all these, we want to have impact, we want to, all of that, right? But we also want to make profits, right? Because if you're not making profit in the business, you might as well go and shut it down, you know, deactivate it legally, whatever, and just make it a hobby, right? So we don't start businesses, you know, just to, uh, to not make money. I didn't anyway, and hopefully you didn't, okay? So... For those of you coming on, as you're coming on, just say hello so I know you're here. Um, hey, Candy, how are you? So tonight I wanted to talk about making profits because listen, when um, you join this group, there's a question that you have to answer. And the question is simply, you know, what challenge, what is your biggest challenge um, that you're facing 
in entrepreneurship, right? It's worded something like that, but that's the that's what it is. So, and what I'm getting overwhelmingly so from people is that they want to get more clients, right? And why do you want to get more clients? You want to get more clients because you want to make more money. And they're also, I don't know where the other one is, honey. You have to do that. Um, and they also are saying, okay, well, um, or, or they're directly saying that they want to make more, you know, make more money or make money even in their business. Some people aren't even making money yet in their business. And so I'm here tonight just to talk a little bit about that. I think I'm going to do just kind of a little mini series tonight, tomorrow, Monday, and um, give you all some tips and things to help you to make profit in your business. So one of the first things that I have found in coaching people as they start their businesses, and you know what, not even just people who have just started. I mean, people who have had businesses for five years, 10 years, even 15 years. I have found that on a foundational level that people aren't even setting revenue goals. Okay. And so here's the thing that's foundational, right? Now, what I also know is that the reason why people aren't setting revenue goals is because they don't do this in their personal finances. So I'm always telling my clients that whatever you do in your personal finances, you're just going to do that very same thing in your business finances. There is no such thing as, okay, I'm starting a business now. So the way I handle money in my business is going to be completely different. No, it's not because you don't all of a sudden know how to do different, right? So whatever you're doing in your personal finances, you're going to do in your business finances. And most people, because I am a licensed financial coach, most people are not planning, you know, they don't have income goals. They don't have goals, period, for their money or anything in their personal finances, right? So these same people may be starting a business. And so therefore, they don't have a goal in their business, right? So that's where you have to start, okay? So for those of you that are on live, um, Hopefully you don't mind sharing because um, it shouldn't be something that you do that you mind sharing. Um, but what is your revenue goal for your business for 2018? What is your revenue goal for your business for 2018? So I'm going to um, use some numbers on the board, just some sample numbers um, to help you as you are thinking about what your revenue goal is and as we progress and I show you what to do with those numbers, okay? So my question right now to you, if you will put in the comments, what is your revenue goal for 2018? What is your revenue goal for 2018, okay? Have you even thought about it? If you haven't thought about it, um, just... Put a number in the comment right now. Maybe later you can go back and really think about it and see if that is um, truly the goal that you want, okay? So put that in the comments. What is your revenue goal? What is your revenue goal? I'm waiting for somebody to put in the comments. <laughs> what is your revenue goal, okay? So I am going to be using... 100K, great. Precious says 100K. Yours is close to the sample number that I'm going to be using. All right. So for the purposes of this um, live tonight, I'm going to be using um, 120,000, okay? 120K. And I'm going to stand on this side. Watch out, honey. I'm going to stand on this side because this is my, I don't know. I like this side, I guess. And um, hopefully you guys can see this. Hopefully there's not too much glare with the lighting or anything. Um, so I'm putting up here at the top, okay, my revenue goal, your, or the revenue goal, the numbers that we are working with for right now. And that number is 120K, okay? That's the number that we're working with. You can use the number that you're working with, or you can um, you know, use this as a sample right here. Okay. I'm going to try to keep up with 
with comments. Really hard for me to see from back here. Okay, so once you figured out your revenue goal, okay, this 120K, there's uh, something that you need to know, which is another thing that most people starting out in entrepreneurship don't understand, okay? And that is this money that we are talking about, this 120K, that is your business income. That's not your personal income. That is not the income that you want your business to make for you. Okay, that's total revenue. Now, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about uh, personal income, but I did want to mention this real quick. And so I generally say if you're making between $0 and 250K in your business, then you want to be paying yourself 50% of that, 50% um, of your business income, okay? Now, I have a whole philosophy behind that. I won't be on here talking about that tonight. Um, I'll let you know how we can uh, discuss that later. But so let's 50% of this then is 60K, right? So you almost have to, and don't, shh, me hard. You almost have to, don't mind my two year old in the background. You almost have to determine what you want to bring home personally to even determine what the business needs to bring home, okay? Because there's two separate things, there are two separate things. What I see a lot of entrepreneurs doing is I see that, you know, if you make $5,000 that month that you are just using that $5,000 for your groceries, for your bills, for your whatever. See, that money is not your money, okay? That money is not your money. So and you have to be very mindful of that because you can get in trouble with um, taxes. You can get in trouble if, God forbid, someone were wanting to sue you, um, and it's not going to happen to anybody in here, but because you're commingling your funds, then you're not protected, okay? So they can come after your personal assets. So it's very, you got to understand that your business revenue is different from your, the, the income that you want to take from your business. So in essence, I'm going to say this and then we're going to move on. We're not going to be talking about the personal income. But in essence, you want to put yourself on payroll, okay? You need to put yourself on payroll. Yes, even if it's just you in your company, you put yourself on payroll and you pay yourself out a paycheck, okay? All right. So I determined, I'm saying I, but this is... This is a sample number. So I determined 60K, Naima, Naima, 60K, okay? So, and I know that I'm paying myself out 50%, so that's why my revenue goal is 120K, okay? So I'm gonna take this 60K off of here because we're not talking about it anymore, but I wanted to share that with you. Um, because I see so many people not even considering that, okay? All right, so you've got your revenue goal. The next thing that you want to do is you want to break this goal down. And so 120K, what does that mean? And all of a sudden, my marker is not working. <laughs> what does that mean, you know, monthly? How much are you bringing in Monthly, can somebody do the math on that? I'm gonna grab my calculator. Grab my calculator. All right, I suppose I should have had this over here already. But if I were gonna break this down, 120K, I wanna figure out how much is that a month? Check in the comments. Um, I'm gonna divide that by 12. Naila. Okay. Mm 
Micah, Micah. All right, so that's 10,000 a month, okay? 10K a month. No. Sometimes she's quiet, sometimes she's not. I guess today she chose not to be. <laughs> All right, so monthly that's 10K, right? Then you wanna break it down even further and you want to, you want to determine, okay, what is that? weekly okay so you go back to this 120k and you do the math we have 56 weeks in a year right and i'm not thinking about holidays and all that kind of stuff right now i'm just doing some straight math that's for you to determine i don't necessarily take a bunch of the days off so 56 so 120,000 divided by 56 weeks, okay? So weekly, I need to make about, it's 2,143, okay? We can round that up to 45 or whatever. Now, some people say, okay, this, is this enough? You know, do I need to break it down some more? Yes, you need to break it down some more. And so, okay, what does that look like daily? Right, so you go back to the 120k thousand. Right, there's 365 days in a year, so you divide it by 365, and then that gives you what you need to make daily. So, for this example, and I'm just going to round up, we're talking about $329, let's just say $330 a day. Okay. $330 per day is what I need to make. Okay, now that you've determined this, okay, $330 a day I need to make, I need to be making um, a little over two grand a week, okay, in order for me to make 10K a month and in order for me to make that 120K for the year, okay? So, now, what I can do, because what happens is we do this all backwards, right? And if you guys are putting comments or um, questions in there, um, I may have to get to them after I'm done with this, only because it's so small, I can't see from here, right? Okay, so now what we can do is we can sit down and think about the product or service that we have, okay, and the different streams of income that we have in our business, all right? So what happens with a lot of us is that we often think about the product and service first, and we start thinking about, oh, how much should it be? And we haven't even done any of this. We haven't even done any of this because pricing is relative, okay? There's no one way to price. There's no thing that says, okay, you're selling this product. It should be this much. It's relative, right? It's dependent upon a lot of things. Um, it could be dependent upon, you know, the market there where you are. What is the going rate for the product or service that you are, uh, that you've put together? Um, it also depends on, again, what is, what is your income goal? What are you trying to do? Okay. And then your product and, and your service really should be priced on, this is my philosophy, it should be priced on the results that you're able to get that person, okay? Or the results that that product is able to, to get for the client. That's what I believe um, that most of your pricing should be dependent on, okay? So, but in any case, I need to make $330 a day, $330 a day. I need, you know, a couple thousand dollars a week so that I can stay on track for this 120K. So now I'm thinking about product or service that I have. So let me ask um, one of you and I'll come and check the comment. Okay, think about the product or service that you have and tell me how much you are selling that product or service for. Tell me how much you're, you're selling that product or service for. We can use um, your number for this particular 
example. Um, it doesn't matter what the number is. So I'm going to wait here just a second because I know there's that beautiful delay. <laughs> Thanks, Precious. She said, great breakdown. Good, 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 good. All right, somebody tell me the price of your product or service. Drop it in the comments. And we'll go with that. You don't necessarily have to tell us what the product, I don't need you to tell me what the product or service is. Just drop the number in there and we'll go with it. Y'all see me making faces. <laughs> That's me trying to look at this little bitty writing on this screen. One ninety-seven. Okay, so Precious has a product or a service that is one hundred and ninety-seven dollars. Okay, so again, let's just say Precious needs to make three hundred and thirty dollars a day. So, uh, clearing out my, there we go. $330 a day divided by the 197. Okay, so Precious needs to sell. Okay, so here's the, um, here's the uh, price of the product. Lord have mercy, I don't know what happened to this marker. It was writing really, really well and I had a red one. Hold on, guys. I'm sorry. I'm just going to bring them all over here. Okay. Let's try this green one. There we go. Okay. So she has a product that's $197. So she needs to sell at least two products per day. Okay, and let's do the um, let's do the weekly. I'm gonna take that number divided by 197, and she needs to at least sell 11, 11 of these per week. Okay, um, let's go ahead. I guess let's just go ahead and do it by the month as well. Now, we're focusing on one product. Hopefully, um, eventually you have more than one product or service that brings in different, um, you know, brings in revenue. But we're focusing on the one product. So the 10, 10K divided by 197. Okay. So for the month, she needs to have about 51 people, 51, so 51 of whatever it is, okay, for the month. All right, so 51 of these a month that she has to sell, 11 a week, two a day. So what Precious could decide to do, she might decide, depending on what it is, right, you might decide, oh, Lord, I want to do 51 a month, right? Because let's just say it's, and I, and I don't know what it is, Precious, but let's just say it's um, a coaching session. She is this two-hour coach, coaching session. So and who wants to do 51 of those a month, right? You see how this begins to be important, you know, as you're looking at your numbers and then you're looking at your product or your service, Okay because we also get into entrepreneurship so we don't have to do a bunch of, you know, so we don't have to work as hard as we did when we were in our nine to five, right? Now, her 197 may not be a two hour coaching session. Maybe it's something, you know, easier. Maybe it's just a digital product or something like that, that she can automate or whatever. And she's not doing a whole lot of work. Okay, pre-recorded, you know, whatever. Okay, but it's something to think about. OK, so depending on what the product or service is and you need to do 51 a month, you might want to, you know, if it's something that's requiring you to show up 51 times, you know, or, you know, you might want to think about that. 
Okay. But if it's not, if it's something that's kind of automated and can, you know, who, right? All right. So 51 of those a month. Now, the product or service, you could also, let's just say it wasn't 197 a month. Let's say it was, you know, I don't know. Let's say it was like 49 a month. Okay. Obviously, we would need way more. Okay. I'm not going to go through the math. I just want to talk about something here for a minute. So obviously it would be way, way more than um, what Precious would have needed, right? And so hopefully whatever this is, this is something that's automated, doesn't require you to show up a whole lot. However, when you think about pricing, if you've got something that's priced at the lower end of things, and for me, lower end would be anywhere from you know, a um, dollar, this has to cost something, a dollar to, mm, I would say anything just under, just under a thousand, right? And then from a thousand to about 8,000 or so, I kind of, kind of call that mid row, thousand to 5,000, 5,000 and up is I call high end. That's just me. Other people might have different parameters. Okay. But so, the way you price too is based on, you know, what do you want? Do you want volume? Okay. You have something where you want a lot of people in it. Maybe it's some type of membership program. Or do you, you don't want volume. You want smaller numbers. Okay. So obviously if you want some, you don't want to um, have a whole bunch of numbers, a whole bunch of clients or whatever. If you only want nine clients, you know, or 10 clients, then 10 clients need to be paying you about a thousand dollars a month for something. Okay. So I'm sharing this just to tell you the thought that needs to go into a plan for your profits for you. You know, we can't just sit here and talk about Oh, I want to profit. I want to, you know, I just want, you know, I want to make money. Yes, we want to make money. Look, look at this, y'all. That's my red marker right up there. Why didn't y'all tell me? <laughs> um, but um, you, we have, you have to plan, okay? You really have to plan. You really have to sit down and think about it. And it really starts here. It starts with determining what the goal is, okay? Because if you're doing all this other stuff first, you've developed a product, you've priced it, you know, um, not your marketing strategy for it and all. If you're doing all of that first before you've even sat down and really thought about this, about the revenue goal, you know, the, you know, how much is that going to be monthly, weekly, daily before you, if you haven't sat down and thought about all of this, then Who's to say if you're going to hit your revenue goal or not, or if you're going to make the profits that you want to make or not, right? I always say that what you focus on grows. What you focus on grows. And so if you're out there haphazardly just developing products and services, and you're not even thinking about how they tie into your bottom line, because see, that's what real business owners do. They are thinking about their bottom line. Now, we like to criticize companies and things, right? Because we're like, ah, they just thinking about the money. They just thinking about their money. And it is a bad thing if all they're doing is thinking about their money and they're not concerned about their employees, you know, and that kind of thing. But it's not a bad thing because you do have to think about the bottom line, right? Once again, we didn't get into entrepreneurship. We didn't get into business to not make money, okay? If you're not making money, it's just a hobby. That's all that it is, right? So we've got to start doing some planning and we've got to start doing some monitoring of this, okay? So we don't just set up new goals and then leave it and walk away, right? We need to, at the end of each week, you know, minimally sit there and, and say, okay, did I meet my goal? If I didn't meet the goal, what can I do to make up the shortfall, you know, 
or you, whatever, but these are questions that we need to be asking ourselves, okay? Weekly, monthly, I won't say, you know, daily. Well, <laughs> who wants to do that? But weekly, definitely not any less than monthly, right? But the reason I say weekly is because if you are falling short of your weekly goal, right, you can begin to think about, okay, what do I need to do the rest of this month to make up the shortfall? Or if this month looks like it's just not going to hit that goal, what can I do next month to try to make up the shortfall? Okay, so you really have to put some time into your into numbers. Some people don't like, now I don't like numbers. Okay, but again, if you're not focusing on this, then you're not going to make this. All right, so then we've talked about, you know, breaking this down and then we've talked about your product or service and how that ties into your revenue goal, okay? So I'm not saying just because you need to make $330 a day, 10K a month, I'm not saying you have to sell a product that's $5,000, right? You don't have to. You can make this 10K a month however you choose to make it, okay? If you want volume, then your the price of your product or service is going to be lower. If you not, If you don't want volume, you want less numbers, do less work, then it's going to be higher, okay? Any questions so far on that? Let me check the comments. Candy Baker says, what you focus on grows. That's right. Okay, Precious says it's an online program. Okay, good, yeah. Because she, you know, because she can automate that. So really it's not a, a whole lot of... Um, you know, I'm assuming precious then that it's like um, videos or something that you've pre-recorded or whatever like that, right? So in that case, you know, 51 of those is just a matter of her. Now it's dependent on her marketing strategy, right? And how is she going to get those 51 people, <laughs> right, per day or um, the, in, into the program? Okay. I said 51 per day. I didn't mean that. I was like 51. That was for the month, right? So you've got to begin, you've got to start thinking about those things. And you've got to think about these things in this order. What is my revenue goal? Okay. What are the products and services that I have? Okay. <laughs> and then, you know, another point, um, we'll be talking about more tomorrow and uh, Monday night. Okay, so I'm not going to give it all to you tonight, but we'll be talking about more tomorrow and Monday night. But, um, you know, the other thing, too, that you want to make sure with your product or service is that whatever you are putting together, you want to make sure that your product or service is going to um, meet the pain points of your clientele or your audience. Right? That you want to make sure. Now, there are some things, <laughs> believe it or not, um, even prior to trying to make profit in the business, and I'm going to go ahead and sit down now because I'm actually through with the board. But there are some things that um, before you before you can truly make profit, some things that you must have in place, and maybe I will write them on the board. There's some things that you must have in place, okay? And every entrepreneur has to have these things in place. I don't care who you are. You've got to have these things in place. And hopefully I'm not frozen. Am I frozen to you guys? I need you all to let me know. Hopefully I'm not frozen. Because I don't see my Facebook screen moving anymore. I hope it's not frozen.
It's not frozen? Okay, because I, I don't see my Facebook screen moving anymore, but that's cool. <laughs> so hopefully it's not. All right, so there's some things that you have to have in place. So last year around this time, um, I did a webinar and I talked about those things that you need to have in place. So those things were, and every entrepreneur has to have this. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you know, you're know you Nike. I don't care if you're Les Brown. I don't care who, who the entrepreneur was. They have to do these things. They had to do these things. They have to continue to do these things, right? So in order for you to really realize the profits that you want to realize, you have to have an audience, okay? It is really hard to get out in, you know, in your business, you start a business, we get all excited and, you know, we put the product together and then we throw it out there, say, hey, everybody, I'm here. And we expect everybody to come and get the product or service. And that's just not how it works, right? What most entrepreneurs either don't realize, some don't realize it, and some just don't want to, is that you have to take the time to build an audience. You've got to take the time to build an audience, okay? So you can build an audience, you know, numerous ways. Email um, listing, keeping an email listing, a Facebook um, group or community, which is great for that, um, you know, or some other social media platform, you know, where you can, you know, have a following that you are, um, have a following that, you know, that you, that's captive to you. That's what I mean. So that's why the email list is good. That's why the Facebook group um, is also good, but you want to make sure you have a way to capture their, the emails of the people in your Facebook group as well. So got to have an audience, okay? Got to have an audience. Without an audience, it's going to be very hard, okay? Because there are, when you when you start talking about your marketing strategy, there's numbers and things that kind you know that go along with it, and that's why it's important to have an audience. And we'll talk more about that, um, not tomorrow, but on Monday. We're going to talk about those numbers and how they work, okay? In terms of having an audience, okay? If you have an audience of ten people you're not going to meet that 51 a month, okay? If you had an audience of 51 people, you're not gonna meet that 51 a month. If you had an audience of 100 people, you're not gonna meet that 51 a month, okay? So you have to understand how the numbers work in business as well, okay? So we'll talk a little bit about that on Monday, okay? Tomorrow, um, we'll talk a little bit, just a tad bit, about um, some cash flow, just a tad bit. <laughs> um, and Monday, we'll talk about those uh, numbers. But I will do, um, do you all have any questions at this point? Any questions? Hey, Kenny, I just saw your, your number down there, that 40. So that was close to um, the 49 that I put up there. So you could go through and you could do that same math, right? And we know that obviously at this number, 49 um, or $40 uh, dollars would definitely, we would definitely need more, okay? And depending on, you know, what that 40, $49 is, it may be fine, you know, for a uh, product or service that you're offering. Like I said, if it's something that's automated or whatever doesn't require you to show up 49 times, you know, um, then, or however many times it would take, then, um, then cool, right? If it's something automated. Um, if it's not, and it's going to require you to show up a, bitch, a bunch of times, <laughs> then, uh, yeah. Uh, Candy says, how do you keep your audience engaged? So um, keeping your audience engaged. A few strategies for keeping your audience engaged really is to um, ask 
um, ask them questions. I'll, you know, ask them questions. Like you all can see sometimes what I'm doing here in the Facebook community. Um, you know, always asking them questions. People like to talk about themselves, right? <laughs> ask them questions. Make sure that the content that you are giving them is relevant content and that you yourself are engaging. And that, um, like I said, that that content is meeting needs, right? Meeting their pain points. So, for example, I mentioned earlier that when people join the group now, of course, like Candy and Precious before you, this, they didn't have this function when you guys joined the group, but Precious, you have your own group, so you know this too. Candy, do you have your own group? Um, they now have where you can ask them questions before they get into the group, right? So the reason why I ask the question, what is your biggest challenge, is so that I can address it in this group, right? I'm doing these Facebook Lives. I don't want to come in here and talk about stuff that people don't want to hear about, right? Or things that they're not struggling with. I want to be able to come in here and talk about things that will truly help um, the people in this group, right? So I have, um, okay, just no. Um, I have, uh, so the answers that I commonly get Again, as I said earlier, was uh, and it all goes back to you know making a profit in the business. People want more clients. Um, people are struggling marketing. People are struggling, you know, making the income that they want to make um, in their business. And you know, every now and then I get people talking about um, mindset, which is huge. Um, I'm gonna talk about that tomorrow, <laughs> which is huge when it comes to making profits. So. Yeah, you know, asking your audience questions about what they need and then address those needs, right? Address them. If you're addressing their needs, they will be engaged. They will continue to follow you. They will continue to, you know, love you. They'll bring people to the group as well because you're meeting the pain points, right? You're addressing the pain points. So that's how you would, you know, that's how you would keep your audience engaged, particularly on social media. Um, Facebook lives video is that's where it's at. I know a lot of people shy away from, you know, doing video, doing Facebook live because we worried about what we look like. We worried about what we sound like. We worried about don't I've been there. <laughs> but um, the study show. <laughs> If you're going to be on social media and especially on a platform like Facebook, that uh, live is where it's at. OK, then video after that, graphics after that, because people this is not something that we don't know. People don't really like to read a whole lot. Unfortunately, I like to read. Right. So if people are posting articles, it's fine with me because I'm going to read it. But some people. And, and that is if I'm interested in that topic or if, if, if I have a need for whatever that art, uh, the topic of the article is about. But um, a lot of people are, are not really, you know, they're not, they're not really reading the articles. You can use articles, just realize that they may or may not be a lot of engagement. But what I have found to work, work is the um, graphics with, um, you know, short, a short blurb to the point, um, but definitely Facebook lives, definitely video, you know, it doesn't just have to be Facebook, be YouTube or whatever. And then keeping, again, asking your audience questions and, you know, things like that and have fun, have fun. So I hope that helps um, some. Um, and I'm going to be incorporating in this group, I'm going to be inter interviewing um, different entrepreneurs and asking them, to share their story, how they got started, and you know some of the challenges they faced, and how do they overcome those challenges, and you know what are they up to now, and you know what would they share with people starting out in business or who are in startup phase of the business, right? Um, because I believe that um, that will help to keep the audience engaged as well. So there's numerous different things that you can do for audience engagement. Okay.
You're welcome. You're welcome, Candy. You're welcome. Any other questions? What other questions do you all have? We're on here talking about making profits, right? <laughs> We're talking about making profits. You know, why is it so hard <laughs> to make profit? And it's not. It's just that we don't we don't really know the things that we should be uh, focused on. And so as I talk with you guys tomorrow night and Monday night, you'll be like, oh my goodness, wow, <laughs> right? This is just stuff that we don't know what we don't know. And, and that's, that's just it. So once you understand um, this stuff, and I'm not saying that you start making profits overnight, so please do not walk away with that, okay? Because there's still... You know, I may share some strategies with you or whatever, but your entrepreneurial journey is your entrepreneurial journey. And so um, what I share with you as a strategy may work for you, or you may need to tweak it a little bit to fit what you're doing. And then it may work for you. Um, you know, it's a lot of try this, try that. Oh, this is working. Let me do more of that. So it's a process, but it doesn't have to take 10 years. It doesn't even have to take five years. Um, don't have to take three years. It just depends, like, you know, what you're going to be focused on. It goes back to that again, what you focus, what you focus on grows, okay? What other questions can I answer this evening um, about profits, okay? And if you have not done this for your business, sit down and do this tonight. Okay, or tomorrow morning, you know, if you're too sleepy <laughs> right now because it's late. But sit down and do it. Sit down and do this. Okay, I'll sit here and watch this live and be like, okay, yeah, that's great stuff, but you don't go do it. Okay, sit down and do it if you have not done this breakdown um, for your business. Okay. And you're going to need it. You're going to need to keep this in your back pocket as we talk um, tomorrow and Monday. All right. I'm not seeing um, any other questions. So let me just move the screen a bit and make sure. Yeah. I'm not seeing any other questions. So I'm done for this evening. I'll be back tomorrow evening. Um, I will definitely let you guys know. I'll let you know ahead of time exactly one time, what time. I want to say 10 o'clock p.m. again, but I have a 17-year-old who works, and I have to take him back and forth to work. <laughs> so I need to make see what his schedule is, see if he's going. Oh, actually, no. He's not going in tomorrow. So I'll be back tomorrow at 10 o'clock p.m. Candy says, this is a great start for 2018. It certainly is. And wait till tomorrow and Monday night. And I've even got something special for y'all even after that. So um, yeah, talk a lot. <laughs> but I'm glad that um, you're, you're feeling already that this is a great start for 2018. It really, really is, right? Getting this stuff out and written and you know, knowing and understanding this, um, you know, it's gonna put you light years ahead of people. Okay, so um, again, I don't see any questions. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off for tonight and I will see you all tomorrow evening, same time, tomorrow night, 10 o'clock, right here on Facebook Live, all right? Peace out. If you think of questions, you know, after, just drop them here in this, um, in this thread. I'll come back and uh, answer those questions, okay? All right, guys, so... I will uh, talk to you all later. You guys have a good night. This has been Lexi Jones, otherwise known as Purposeful Lexi. And I'll see y'all tomorrow.